Now there's a couple more things left to do to make this look really good. Right now the turret is shooting around uncontrollably and would probably destroy everything in its path just because you're in close proximity to it. So we only want it to shoot when it's rotated enough to actually see the player. Now of course we could do this by doing difficult calculations with angles and stuff like that but I think I found a shortcut that you'll like. So let's open up our turret script and let's go down to where the invoke repeating is and as you can see the invoke repeating function that triggers the animation of the falcon is set from the root of the script so it's invoked right away as soon as the turret is created in the memory of the computer so we don't need that what we need to have is different states that the turret is in as in attack or idle so to do that let's create two more functions one of them is called attack and the other one is called disengage. Of course the invoke repeating function will be triggered from the attack function. All right. Now to make this work we need to add some variables up top here and for example the variable mode which will be by default in idle so when our turret is idling it's not looking at destroying things okay also what we need let me copy some text from our effects here is turn the effects off by default it only needs to be on when it's actually shooting and of course the best way to do this is just add that into our awake function now that we have that covered we need to switch the modes into our functions and check if we are currently attacking or not so in the attack function let's type if the mode does not equal attack so we're not in attack mode so we're in idle mode or whatever else you might make up in the future right now we need to go to attack mode next we need to do the same thing in the disengage function if mode does not equal idle and then we need to add some code there now let's start with the uh, attack function it is invoking the repeating and the repeating will turn on the animation of the flames and then it sets the mode right then to attack so that's fine now for the disengage function it checks whether our mode is idle or not and apparently right now it is not so here we can cancel the invoke by type cancel invoke and next what we need to do of course is set the mode back to idle but that's not all we also have to turn the flames back off So that should work just fine, except that nothing is right now triggering the attack function. So what we need to do is trigger the attack function from our scripts up here. So let me copy this. And it only happens when our player is detected. So let me replace the print function with our attack function and add a semicolon and then copy our disengage function and copy that whenever we are not supposed to be attacking so before every return false that is when we're out of range or when something is colliding okay that should do it but now for the part where as soon as we start attacking it will still invoke the repeating and the flames will shoot uncontrollably now it only needs to do that a couple seconds into it when there's been enough time to rotate so let me just change this number to two seconds and the invoke repeat will only start two seconds into it now let me save that and unity is telling me I have some errors somewhere and it says unknown identifier attack let's see where that happens oh, that of course should be a string in between double quotes alright save that the error is gone 
Now let's see what our script is doing. Our turn rotates and then two seconds into it starts shooting. Very cool, very nice. Exactly what we want. Now I'm hiding behind the cube and it stops shooting and it's not looking for me anymore. Now if I come around from the back it starts finding me again and after two seconds it works. Now if I'm out of range like right now it will not find me until I get closer and then two seconds from there it starts shooting. Very nice. We fixed that problem pretty swiftly and one more thing let's change the mode variable to a static variable so that we can access it from other scripts and this way we can see whether turrets are attacking or not. Perfect. Let's move on.